Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 80 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series, where today we're finally going to start working towards our engineering school project, uh, and we're starting out by getting glycerol through pneumaticraft, yeast, ethanol, all kinds of good stuff. Let's get started. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful night here in the world of the Andrada, where we immediately take a nap, as is tradition in our playthrough. Today we are going to continue working on, um, well, stuff and things, as always. We're not continuing anything, though, because we haven't started anything, because we kind of sort of wrapped up our projects last episode that we were working on. Uh, so let's pop down here. You're going to see that our setup here that I had for our automation for our energizing orb has disappeared. And that's just because I moved it behind here. I felt it looked cleaner. So I entangled our um, energizing orb and then I just reconfigured my modules to pull from this instead of over there. And now everything happens wirelessly, all magical, and it looks cool when it does it. Uh, so if we go ahead and request stuff, if we say, hey, I want... Um, Let's just say energized steel because it's cheap. If I want 10 of these, I can't make it. Okay. Are we having an issue? We're having the issue. I need to go through the comments. A lot of people have mentioned how to fix this uh, better, but I need to just go through the comments and figure it out so that way I can get this done. There we go. But now we should have access to all our items. Yes. And now if I say, hey, energized steel... I want 10 of those. They're going to pop in, boop, get blasted, pulled out. Pop in, get blasted, pulled out. And you don't even see it happen. It's like, oh, magic. Ooh, ah. I like how I'm mesmerized by a non-magic mod. This is a tech mod. And I'm saying it's like magic. When we have actual magic mods in this pack that do much cooler magic-y things than just teleporting an item into a block and then pulling that item out yeah but it's the simple things in life right anyway so uh in between episodes i did that i also went ahead and uh spruced up well not really spruced up but i just changed up our trading hall a little bit here and i actually need to remove you and you i went ahead and put the engineering blocks down um, or I'm sorry, immersive engineering so that way we can have our engineers going so that they can trade us stuff and they're doing pretty good. So we have this first one here. This first one I initially had set up with the, um, oh, what's the thing called? The current transformer, this guy here, uh, which is fairly simple to make just, you know, terracotta, copper and all that stuff. There's nothing really that I need out of this block that I can tell, though, from a villager trade. Uh, let's do this, this professions, electrician. Yeah, I don't know how to see what profession, what this guy trades me. Other than if I do LV wire coil, recipe, electrician, and I go to villager trades here, kind of a roundabout way, but we can get to the electrician this way. But I don't see really anything like crazy that he trades with all this stuff other than these wire coils. And I'm like, well, I really don't necessarily need that. I mean, I guess trading wire for emeralds is not bad. Like uh, if we did the copper wire, it's one copper to, so it'd be two copper to an emerald, I guess, something like that. But I figured I didn't need it. So I put another engineer's crafting table. So this guy here is uh, almost up to expert level. I've just been trading some emeralds for some treated wood planks, which is why we have so many. Um, but the cool thing is he sells concrete. And if you know anything about our engineer school project, part of this is that I need concrete. I need 1500 total concrete here. And I just really wasn't in the mood to set up the process for this because then we're gonna have to get a, uh, cobble gen going so we can get slag smelted and gravel. And I'm just not about that life at the moment. So yeah, let's just go ahead and grab some emeralds. I have a ton of emeralds from from just trading and all kinds of stuff. Um, let's go ahead and buy some more concrete. Thank you, sir. And there we go. Look, we got almost two stacks. We're like a, a third of the way there. Not even close, but we'll get there. Slowly over time, I'll trade with this guy and get some more concrete and we'll be good to go. 
Uh, we have a machinist over here, which again, he really isn't selling much either. Uh, anything that I crazy need, maybe these mechanical components or something like that. But what he did sell me was the Arc Furnace Electrodes Blueprint. And if you remember, we were looking at this uh, an episode or so back. That's what gets me my graphite electrodes. So with that, I can now get the graphite electrode just by simply, instead of doing uh, this process or this process, which only gets me 50% integrity. I think I have to charge this if I need to do it. Uh, I can now just put my four in there and I get my graphite electrode. And if you remember, those were used to make the, um, uh, uh, it's for something. What was it? Were you, what were you going to use this for? The enrichment chamber. Yes. So now we can get to the enrichment chamber eventually. He's really kind of not doing much for us. Uh, biggest thing is I can trade cold coke for emeralds or aluminum for emeralds, both of which we have quite a lot of. Now, this guy here, though, this guy's my friend because this guy is selling steel scaffolding and aluminum scaffolding, which is great. Steel scaffolding is a pain because it requires steel. And not that we don't have a steel bee or anything like that, but like who wants to sit there and, you know, do all this manual work when I can just buy six of them for one single emerald? Duh. So, yeah, we got our uh, immersive engineering guys going. They're doing great. I keep I, I've replaced this log about four times now because I keep teleporting home. But since I, I can strip logs because this is an axe, I keep stripping the log instead. So I just said, forget it. I'm going to leave it there. I don't care. Concrete put away. So that takes care of that. So as you can see, we have a few new things on our hot bar or I mean our um, inventory bar, bookmark bar. There we go. Because we need to really start working on getting our engineer school project done. Uh, it, this is our next big big step we need to start working on getting this when you start working on getting our building materials built to put together i honestly could probably make the copper shingles now if i taught the system how to do that we could say hey you are this also i can teach the system how to make this throw these into a crafter look we have just enough room here and I could say that I need the one, two, three, four, five. So 500. 500 of them, 500, 2,500. I need 2,500 copper shingles. Twenty five hundred copper shingles start. I have enough for that 628. So we can go ahead and start that. And I think I'm going to need 2,500 of the other thing, too, right? 2,500 frame glass? Yes. Start should have enough for that. It's going to use a bunch of iron, but we have plenty of it. So there we go. So that kicks off the those two processes. Those are good. And then we have the treated wood planks. Uh, our thing has finished up top if we go up to our factory. So really, I just need to get everything put into the um, stuff, and we're good to go. But there we go. Look, we have 10,000 treated wood planks, and we have still some uh, stuff left over. I, th I thought we were going to use all of it, but I guess I misunderestimated because we have a lot left. Jeez, those are 32 buckets each. All right, sweet. We'll get to that automation uh, next episode. We'll, we'll start working on that. We'll probably just utilize this. I'll put, instead of barrels here, we'll put um, bins. We'll put the elite bins. I'll split out that 10,000 into 2,500 chunks, put them here, our framed glass, our all our stuff, kick it off, and then let this thing just run for a couple episodes. Not going to hurt us or anything. Uh, it can just run in the off time and start building us those things. But there we go. Frame glass is coming. Copper shingles is here, and we're good to go. So that takes care of that. So starting process. What I want to work on today, though, is uh, starting at the beginning of this, we're going to need to get um, bandages, right? And in order to get bandages, we need glops of glycerol. And in order to get drops of glycerol, it is a byproduct of the uh, biodiesel production through Pneumaticraft. Now, as far as I know, biodiesel is... Um, made much easier in immersive, but you can't make it until you get to the medium machinery, which is after you do your engineer school project. Uh, but it is much easier to do it this way than it is the pneumaticraft way because it doesn't require yeast. And yeah, but that's where we're at for now. So we're going to go ahead and start working on this. So in order to do this, we need to um, get a fluid mixer. So 
Drop of glycerol is made in a fluid mixer with vegetable oil and ethanol, right? Vegetable oil and ethanol. Ethanol is made in a thermopneumatic processing plant with yeast culture and sugar. Important to note that it does have to remain between 30 C and 60 C. What is our ambient temperature here in this area? Because a lot of times, you know, you can just, it could literally just sit here because it's at ambient 30 C. We have an ambient temperature of 12 C. So we're not going to be able to do this without doing some sort of uh, heating up of this. Now, if I were to, huh. Like, I believe a torch, if we throw a torch under there, isn't that enough heat? Potentially, like a torch just sitting under this would act, would heat it up, I think. Or maybe a campfire. No, a campfire sitting next to it would go up to the 99C, wouldn't it? Um. Well, that says 1400 Celsius, but it, uh, a pipe doesn't get up that hot, so... Yeah, we're going to have to figure out some way to throttle our temperature on these. I'm probably going to actually need to end up making another one of these. And I also need to empty that. But we'll get to there. Okay, so that's ethanol production. Ethanol is made in a thermopneumatic processing plant. Yeast with a little bit of sugar will make us our ethanol. How do we make yeast then? Well, yeast is made in a thermopneumatic processing plant with mushrooms. Uh, one mushroom gets us 250 millibuckets of yeast, or we can do an in-world yeast production setup. I kind of sort of think that we can go, it depends. I'm going to try both ways, um, but I'm going to go ahead and get a, a mushroom spawner setup going or, or a uh, spore recreator is what it is from industrial foregoing. We're going to see how this works because uh, I imagine we're going to need mushrooms for other things too in the future. So having mushrooms available to be produced, I think is going to be a good idea. So how do we make this? Well, we need to make a pity machine frame. If you remember, we've had pity machine frames on our system for a while. Oh, by the way, ultimately yeast. I don't I'm not going to go this route with yeast. We're not going to do either of these. We're going to do them to get our first couple buckets. But then we're going to go ahead and make a PCB. PCB is made with an iron B, a lubricant bucket and a pneumatic helmet in our pressure chamber at four and a half bar. Pneumatic helmets fairly easy to make. Just requires us to do this whole process, which we have basically the capability to do all of this stuff. Uh, a hazmat helmet. Yeah, we can do this. Just have to run this through five times so we can make this happen. And the PCB has a byproduct of water into yeast. So we can actually convert our setup over here. Excuse me, sir. We can convert this over here. We can put uh, fluid collectors from industrial four going here and we can put fluid placers on the other side. Bam have a pump or something, some sort of pump maybe to get the water out or an aqueous accumulator. That's what I went and decided on that we have to make these water reagents in order to get this done. But the aqueous accumulator doesn't require power and it can pump water from any source blocks on its side. And then we can get water placed and then it'll place the water down. B will fly over, convert it to yeast, we'll capture it. And I think that's going to be the best way. Plus the PCB has a um, byproduct of the PCB honeycombs which can be converted over to empty PCBs as well as compressed iron and etching acid as a byproduct. So I think that's pretty cool. So we'll work on getting that very soon too. But we're gonna do our first yeast manually because we need yeast to start start the yeast production. You gotta have it to, to get it. So let's get started with that. Um, yeah, so in order to do so, we're gonna need these pity machine frames and the pity machine frames are made with iron mechanical components and a site casings. Machine frames and leaded concrete. Leaded concrete is made from concrete and the lead plate should have that. So we're going to make a few of these. And I think, yeah, that's a quest. And maybe we have everything we need for this. Yeah, I like it. Bam. There we go. Pity machine frames. And that gets us started into industrial foregoing. Uh, we always want to make sure we're checking our quests because it can give us some good stuff as we go through, as you all know. Now, this is a fluid extractor. Place one facing along latex power, producing latex power. Yeah, this is the standard fluid extractor, which we've already used before. Or well, we have the uh, arboreal extractor. If I pick up an arboreal extractor, is that going to complete the quest? You're not even doing anything here, buddy. Yeah. 
This one doesn't do anything anymore because the leaves, something happened to the leaves. So it doesn't really affect us there. But that gets that quest done. Bam, bam. And then we have other stuff that we can do. Okay, cool. Bam. That's the standard. This is industrial foregoing standard process. We already have bypassed this essentially. We're already producing rubber. Um, so like we can we can easily pick up our machines here and do the thing. We should be able to get all these quests done because we've already sort of bypassed all of this stuff by doing it other ways. But now we have the ability to do the dissolution chamber, which is you know gonna be key for a lot of stuff in industrial foregoing anyway. Okay. So that gets us our pity machine frames, leaded concrete, pity machine frames. We've had those on our to-do list for a very long time. Also need to get these centrifuge. I did go ahead and make the other casings uh, and get our centrifuge going. Let's go ahead and see. So the spores reactor is going to require uh, this stuff. So it's going to require redstone flux coil. It's going to require some mycelium. I do have mycelium. Just went into the nether and uh, silk touched it up. Uh, we have two mushrooms, a pity machine frame, plastic, and nocturnal powder. Now, plastic, we don't have yet. As you can see, we hover over it. It's red. We don't have plastic. Easy to get, though. It's literally just dry rubber put into our blast furnace, smelts into plastic, and has a byproduct of slag. Dry rubber, if you remember from long ago, is made by using latex, sulfur, and that makes us some dry rubber. So we're going to go ahead and get, I'll probably just do half a stack of this. Pop on over to our blast furnace which is this bad boy right here uh oh apparently i've already done this before hey i didn't even know that's just how good i am i just i set things up and i don't even remember that i do it we can take the slag out too sweet well we have plastic that was much easier than i thought it was going to be and that is going to get us our spores recreator now the spores recreator is a cool block it requires uh, water, power, and uh, any sort of mushroom. The water is going to be the hardest part for us right now because uh, we don't really have any easy water production. The aqueous accumulator we could do. Uh, it's not expensive except for this thrasher tooth. I'm going to need to go into uh, the ocean and go find a thrasher. So that way I can uh, throw it into our Drigme farm and get that going. So for now, we're just going to manually, um, I guess, manually uh, pump water into this. But eventually we'll be able to automate it. That's water. That's not what I want. I want advanced universal cable. Sit here. You can go here. And you are this to go there. Okay. So now that has power. And then we can just give it some water. Yeah, you fill up one bucket at a time. There we go. Eight buckets. And we just need to put mushrooms in here. So if we get some sort of shrooms, uh, and most abundantly, we have blood mushrooms from the undergarden. And I believe these can be used for the production of yeast, right? Yeah, that can be used for yeast production. Um, or do we just want to use regular mushrooms? Is there any difference, I guess, is the question. Yeah, you produce 250 millibuckets. It's all the same. So we can just use regular mushrooms here. So if we put this in here, it's going to, uh, let's just do one of them, actually. And it should double the mushroom. So we're going to put it in, mushroom, doubled, bam. So what we can do is loop this. All we have to do is set a pipe that exports from the side, brings it back into the top, and it'll just loop through without having to have any uh, issues. Bam. So we can say, hey, you're going to pull. And then we're going to enable output to the right. Yeah. And input from the top. It should be pulling, actually. Push. Yeah, did it do it? Interesting that it's not doing it. We can f we can make it work though by doing just putting like chests. If I get like a chest, and then I logistical transporter here. There we go. 
and then you're going to pull from there. And there we go. Now it'll loop. This is going to push to the right, and then it's going to go whoop, whoop, and it's going to pull, and it's just going to keep doubling all of our mushrooms. So we can turn these off, so that way the only thing that goes in there is the correct directions. And then for water, uh, of course, you know, we, we need to get water producing somewhere, which is what we're going to use an aqueous accumulating for. But we need to get that water reagent. Uh, so we're not going to worry about it too much. But yeah, look, we got mushrooms being doubled up and eventually it's going to fill up all these slots. Uh, if As long as we have enough water in here, of course, it'll fill up all the slots and we're going to get a bunch of different mushrooms. So we're going to just let that run through. It does its thing. I don't, how much mu how much does it use, actually? Uh, it's recipe. Interesting that it's not. Oh, there it is. It actually doesn't say how much water this uses, but each one of these processes. So we're at 6,600 uses uh, 100 millibuckets of water. So right now we're going to be able to make what? Eight, 80, 80 new mushrooms out of that. So I'm not going to complain. So that gets us some extra mushrooms. So we can go over to our um, farm here. And we need to go ahead and start working on getting our first bit of yeast going. So let's take this off of our to-do list and start working on this. So again, 30 to 60 degrees Celsius is going to be the biggest issue. It doesn't look like it requires any pressure. It's just temperature to make this happen. So let's go ahead. Thermo pneumatic. Can I make another one of these? Do I have the resources for this? So we can have a dedicated one because it doesn't require uh, any pressure. So I can we can experiment with this one uh, and with that, uh, with the torch idea that I was having. So if we get a torch and we place it. Not there. It needs to go. No. There, geez. Oh, but it needs to sit on that. OK. All right. So how are you going to do temperature wise with a torch on you? Uh, but you probably want yet yeah, not be exposed to the air. I'll get thermal lagging at some point, but I want to just see how this works. Oh, I have enough thermal lagging, actually. It won't. It won't let me place the thermal lagging. What the heck? There it goes. Weird. Okay, so is a torch going to provide enough? Or is it going to take forever for us to get there? And does it need... Okay, it is increasing in temperature. Do we need a heat pipe? Would that help? Or am I just going to have to sit here and wait and see if this gets up to 30? Well, while it's doing it, we can go ahead and get some water in here. Just max it out and get some mushrooms in here. And then it's going to tell us, you know, we're going to get up to the range. And basically, we just wait and see if the torch can uh, get us to where we need to be. We're so close. Let's do a little bit of inventory cleanup while we wait. You're going to go here. Nighttime has arrived. So let's sleep. You go there, you go there, iron goes away, and maybe we have some yeast. Hey, we have it working. It's doing its thing, creating yeast. So we're sitting at 32C. I don't know how hot a torch is going to get overall, but uh, it works. So now we just need to get a couple more. We need to get at least one bucket of it because there is another method of... Really? I can't tick accelerate because the thermal lagging is in the way. There. But get up the temperature again. Oh, and actually tick accelerating it gets it up the temperature faster. Okay. I like that. But basically, I just need one bucket of this, and then we can duplicate that bucket in world. Boop. And there we go. We have one bucket of yeast culture. And the torch gets too hot. 
especially when it's tick accelerated and it's getting really hot. Uh, torch, too much, but that's fine. We have one bucket. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's go ahead and head home and we can set up a quick little simple automation. Uh, well, not really automation. It's going to be manually processed, but we'll set up yeast. Okay, so it's super simple. That, sugar, and water, and a bucket. So all we have to do is drop our sugar in here and it, you can drop a whole stack in there. Not going to affect anything. Place this down and then turn off your magnet. Stop. It's very important that we do this in the correct order because if we take a look at yeast in world, Drop some sugar into a pole of yeast culture, then place some water adjacent to it. The yeast culture will spread into the water. Note that the crafting check is done when the water is placed, not when the sugar is dropped. So we got to have the sugar in here first and then drop the water. So the sugar is in there. Put the water. Should convert to yeast. There we go. And then we can have infinite yeast. And if I get my uh, empty tank... It's in bucket mode. We can pick it up. And as you can see, it doesn't matter how much sugar is in. You can have the whole 64 of sugar. And can you automate this? Absolutely. You can use some redstone timers uh, to, to automatically place so that, it, you know, get a detector that detects when the sugar is in the area. Place water if there's nothing here. When it converts over to yeast, have it get picked up and then do it again over and over. But for now, this is a fairly simple thing to do. Just swap in between these two buttons. Yeah, I'll come back when I have my bucket filled up. Okay, and there we go. 32 buckets of yeast plus an extra bucket here for uh, posterity purposes. We can throw that in there. So that gets us our yeast that we're going to need for our ethanol production. Then we just need to put that in a thermonomatic processing plant again from 30 to 60 degrees Celsius with some sugar. And we're going to have our amount. So we're going to end up with 16 buckets of ethanol at the end of this. But again, it's literally just as simple as popping over to our factory and dropping it inside of our thermonomatic processing plant that we already have set up here conveniently for all of this stuff. However, it's too hot again. Um, really need to see what is the best way for us to do this, like to keep this in a proper temperature range. Obviously, if I break the torch, temperature will start dropping pretty rapidly. I also need to empty this out. Uh, let's get my gauge dropper. And then we can clear the gauge dropper uh, by doing this. Yeah. And then pick up my torch. If I break this, do you lose your fluid? That'd be kind of nice. No, you don't. That figures. Uh, but we can pump it out. That's fine. Move fluid. And then let's get a trash can. I should have a fluid trash can. And there we go. All the water should come out of there. I don't have my magnet on anymore, so everything's getting messed up. Okay, so that is that. So then if I take my yeast culture and put as much of it into this as I can, there's going to be eight buckets. Bam. Or 16 buckets. Oh, it actually does half. We can then get sugar in here. Uh, Sugar. We can always convert sugar cane over, so that's fine. We're going to do this, and it's going to say, hey, it's too hot again, or not hot enough again. But we can get that going. I would love to just to accelerate it, though. Uh, please hurry up. I'm hoping maybe by having this one facing off, it'll uh, lose enough heat that it can't you know, that it'll stay within its range. I know that like we can take it to a desert and a desert would be the good temp a good temperature. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's do that. 
I believe deserts are uh, automatically at 30 degrees Celsius ambient. And we do have a desert here. Right here. Oh my goodness. I don't have my magnet on, so it didn't come with me when I did that. I just want to get this ethanol produced before we wrap up the episode. And that way we can come back and get the uh, other stuff going. Because we have a whole other line of stuff that we need to get done, but it's going to be fairly simple, that line. Okay, so now if I place this here, ambient temperature is... I believe the ambient temperature here is 30C. But if we throw this here, it'll just do it. Even And that's even with all the block faces exposed. Like, we're good to go. I could even... Tick accelerate and we'll be fine. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Cool. Yeah, maybe setting this up in the desert. Uh, if we could get a ender tank, really, we could automate this and just leave this over here. Chunk load it, leave it over here, and we're going to go. But there's our ethanol production. So that is half of the line that we need for our drops of glycerol. And we don't need that many drops of glycerol, to be honest with you. We only need five times times four. So we just need... 20 times four so i need 80 total drops of glycerol so i'm not like super duper concerned about it i just don't know it's, it's 25 millibuckets to get one drop of glycerol i should probably pop this into our crafting kit calculator and that'll tell me how many buckets i'm going to need ultimately let's do you and you are made like so save and i'm going to need and actually let's do this yeah bandage in here and i'm gonna need uh 20 of these right one two three four yeah 20 20 bandages so yeah 80 drops of glycerol which is going to require two buckets of ethanol and two buckets of vegetable oil so we actually already have that like it's not even that difficult so our next step yeah we're about to have the two buckets of ethanol in like literally a second or two seconds or 20 seconds so that's that now we just need to get our vegetable oil which is super simple literally just any sort of seed or plant inside of a thermo pneumatic processing plant with pressure so yeah next episode we'll come back finish this off we have our ethanol now once this finishes we're going to be good to go we'll get this done and that's going to get us the stuff that we need for our construction tools then we can make our compressed iron drill bit that's easy and we can get this uh get this whole thing started this this shebang this party cooking up but anyway, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Tips and tricks on this thermo pneumatic processing plant to keep it in between the 30 to 60 Celsius range at home would be great. That way I don't have to bring it over to the desert since we don't have ender tanks available to us. But if I have to come over here and do these crafts manually for a bit, that would be fine too. I'm not going to be upset about it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.